Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. I think you clipped just a tiny bit there, Will. I'm, really? <laughs> mm, mm. Oh, that was just a crack. I just knew you that know, would puberty's that. a real bitch. I knew that would upset you just a tiny bit. <sighs> hey, uh, hey. Hey, everybody. Happy Friday as we are recording this. So a full almost five days before... You out there listening to it. This will go up Christmas Eve. It will go up on Christmas hey, Eve. Tuesday, Correct. Christmas yeah. Eve. Happy, well, merry, Kwanzaa, Christmas, Festivus, whatever feats of strength float your fancy, we wish you happy versions yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good Festivus. A reflection of the on the year and also the decade, even though eh. I'm sure everyone will say... Mm. It, the decade's not over till next year. No, that's not true. Ah, no, whatever. It's it's fine. It's it's and by any metric, you can still look back past ten years. Look, did we finish the millennium at the end of two thousand or nineteen ninety nine? I don't want to have what this we, conversation. What we, what we end up uh, so this <laughs> year, twenty twenty, August twenty twenty, is the thirtieth anniversary of my arrival in San Francisco. Wow, really? Uh huh. It's the twentieth anniversary of my arrival in San Francisco. It's um. It's June the, is, the 20th. June is. I came out in. I came out in July. Of 2000. Of 2000. Huh? Mm. My kids were already uh, a year old. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Fascinating. I mean, and so that means I've lived in San Francisco longer than a portion of the tested team <laughs> has well, been Well, Norm's been here his entire life. I've been here since 1984. No, 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 but like yeah. <laughs> longer than, like, I'm now dealing with <laughs> yeah. doctors and police that are that are younger than how yeah. long I've lived in I San know. Francisco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's true. It's scary. Yeah. Oh. Anyway, you saw the title of this episode. You know what's going down. Yeah. We're going to talk about the Star War. Star Wars. It's the last <laughs> one. They're never making another one now. We're done. T Ross. Is that what they're uh, calling it? Is that what the kids call it? Tross? Maybe. Tross. 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 The Rise of Skywalker. Tross. <laughs> um, the Rise of. So we just got back from it. We Will literally went to a yes. show. show. Literally, yeah. yeah. So At it's Alamo Draft House. Fresh in your minds. I got to see it a, a day and a half ago. Um, Can so I just say. Thinking a little bit. Yep, yep, At yep. the very front. Alamo Draft House, Theater 5, second floor, way up there, tiny little theater. Mm -hmm. 94 seats. Fantastic theater to see oh, what we're in. We were in the back row, which is exactly right. <laughs> right? Yeah. There's only like six rows. Four, five, four rows. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it was great sound, really great sound. Mm. The screen and looked nice. The screen ratio to where you were sitting was lovely. Yes, yeah, terrific little theater. So don't, just if you're going to go to San Francisco's Alamo Draft House and you're wondering, is Theater 5 too small for this big cinema experience I want? The answer is no, it's not too small. Yeah, no, it, 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 holy, I'm going to this Dolby Cinema uh, at the Metreon tomorrow, so. Oh, you are? Yeah, watch, yeah, Gina yeah, and I are going there. I thought some excited. of the low-end rum, I actually, from a, <laughs> we could just start. I thought from a sound design place, the low end uh, rumbles were stellar in the theater. Like, whoa, very physical experience with some of the, uh, lot, some of lot the of, sound uh, effects. The sound design. Of, yeah. yeah. Lucasfilm, they like to flex their audio chops. I, I think it was the best sounding lightsabers I agree. I've heard. Like, the light, just in general, the choreography and the lightsaber fights. And there were a, kind of a lot of lightsaber fights. There were. Yeah. There were a few. So, yeah. so let's go like five minutes. Okay, okay. We're going to start spoilers. spoiler free and then we'll get spoiler -ific. Yes. Just in case there are some of you out there who have not seen it and very reasonable. A lot of people are waiting for Christmas. Yep. You know, yep. So we'll get the five minute impressions. Of course, people may already have read like some reviews and the Rotten Tomatoes score, whatever. Fresh out of the movie theaters, both of you. Uh, Will, let's go. I, I Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> Um, there were, uh, so you were okay. disappointed. I was disappointed. Yeah. I, I felt like, I mean, I, look, I felt like I, I was one of the people that really liked the last Jedi. I watched it. I've watched it probably a dozen times at mm -hmm. this point. Well known. I love that. Um, Ryan Johnson opened up that world, right? He, yeah. he opened up the force to people who weren't Skywalkers and who weren't Palpatines. And, you know, he, left you the last shot of that movie is of a little kid who is presumably a slave on a bad planet using the force to call up a broom. And that to me says, Hey, look, the force is back out there. We're going to, we're going to see some Jedis and we're going to see some people who aren't children of Anakin Skywalker. Right. Right. And you know, I, that's not what this movie is, which is fine. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not 
I'm not going to go out and make a bunch of angry YouTube videos about how J.J. Abrams has ruined Star Wars. Wait, what are we doing right now? To be, okay, I'm going to make one <laughs> YouTube video. No, like, look, it's a fine movie. It was it was well constructed. It was plotted well. All that stuff works. I, the characters I, are great. The performances are amazing. The performances are amazing across the board. Everybody in the cast does stellar, mm. ex, ex, exciting, complicated, lovely work. And I'm kind of, I haven't read any of the literature about it. So None I have no idea what they filmed with Carrie Fisher and how they were mm -hmm. able to get her to be in two movies. I thought she, there was, I, I was kind of astounded at how well she integrated into this movie Me too. Uh, and yeah. how well that felt. Um, all the performances were stunning. The music is actually some of the, it's like mm. maybe like, my favorite Star Wars score it, ever. It, it, it wraps up all of the, the best <laughs> themes from all of the Star Wars movies. Like there's, there's Duel of the Fates, there's mm -hmm. Leia's theme, there's Luke's theme, there's the Imperial March. It's, it's A plus. Like John, if John Williams is. That's the last one. Norris I, Mike, he's not doing oh, that. He's making faces. Yeah, no, I was making squishy yeah, I'm faces. Making squishy. I didn't. You, I didn't think the music was spectacular. Yeah. I, 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 I like the new music that was introduced in Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. Ray's theme was one of my favorites. Ray's theme's bum, great. Bum, yeah. bum, bum. Like when she's like, you know, exploring. Yeah. Bum, 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 bum. And I think they brought that back well. The one thing that I kept on thinking, I was bracing throughout my entire screening, and we are starting with non-spoilers because this is a film for which the spoilers seem to, if the fear of spoilers and the plot reveals kind of loom over your watching of the film, because the promise is that it's the end of the saga, it's the end of nine it's, movies, it's, Dakota, yeah. it's the, the reveals, and, and because the last film, Last Jedi, did not satisfy for some people in terms of the revelations, uh, Going into this, I think there was an expectation that J.J. Abrams coming in and doing the writing with Chris Terrio would address some of that. And so I couldn't enjoy the film, I feel like, in the first viewing as much as I would have wanted to because I was also just waiting for shoes to drop. Right. Reveal, reveal, yeah, yeah. impact. And then also the other thing is I was thinking back a lot to, honestly, Endgame, which came out yeah, this year. I can... Endgame is all is this year, and yeah, right, it is. Right? Endgame Jesus, was May. I know it's been a long year. That's it's been a long decade. Shocking how long this year has been, but and, and that was the culmination of yeah, twenty two movies and ten years of filmmaking. This is but, nine movies and forty years of filmmaking. And so theoretically, like you have the same opportunity to to you know close the book in a, and and make you feel something as an audience. And I kept on thinking back, wow, there is no. They, I, I see they want to have a portals moment here. They want to have a caps yep. Mjolnir moment here, but like I didn't feel it. I look. There were I, a couple times I felt it. There were a couple times. Yeah. I, there was actually I, I got I got misty a few times. I will also say, it is a thankless task to be asked to write the end of such a deeply culturally important saga as this like i wouldn't take on this task no no <laughs> you know, no, no for anything i, 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 I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy <laughs> i, I, I uh, going back to watchmen i'm like wow i wish the nostalgia pill was real and everyone leaving this movie was forced to take the jj abrams nostalgia pill of making and writing this film to know what to know what through to do the, it. The, right right I so wish I could take it's the something we couldn't. As, as yeah. We as armchair, you know, moviegoers, yeah. and, and like we could never, as much as we want to empathize with, we would never know the rigors I, of that. I need to see it again. I I was not disappointed by it as Will was, um, but I was not as emotionally moved as I was hoping to be. But, I mean, that's that's kind of what I, I like. But that's look, also like, what wh 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 what could you give well, me after all this time? I, <laughs> I, you know, you want on something that is for the end of a 40 year yeah. 11 movie saga or something. But every one of us has our own experience of it. So how do you, but you want, you want some sort of closure. You want <laughs> the, to, you the, want to put a tidy bow on it. You know, the, end and, you know, the movie review line that I hate so much now is it's not for everyone. Like what movie is oh, for everyone? It's a mixed bag. <laughs> right. It's a mixed like, bag. Norm. Like it's a mixed bag. Yeah. It's a melting pot. No, I, really. so look, did, it, it's it's you know we talked about sticking the landing last week with Watchmen, mm -hmm. and it, I I didn't want I, I wasn't expecting a landing to be stuck. You know it's too much to ask for Watchmen and Endgame and and fifteen other things that came out this year to stick the landing. What what I was hoping for was a resolution that felt just and right. And I don't think I can talk about why I'm disappointed in that without getting into spoilers. Sure, no, that's and we can get there. We can get there in a second. Okay. Um, 
And we will. And we will. Uh, I also thought more and more and more, uh, these big tentpole films, even if they're terrible, they're beautiful. Yeah. And that's something oh, this yeah. film also is in spades. Uh, like, it used to be you'd see the Ralph McQuarrie paintings of Star Wars, and then you'd see what they shot, and you'd be like, wow, they, they got as close as they could for 1977 or 81 or 83. Mm-hmm. And now it's like all of those master shots really do feel like those paintings brought to life with all the depth and yes. all the beautiful variants and, and incredible detail. Funny uh, in, in that one of my criticisms or one of my... It's tough to say, Chris. One of my disappointments in The Mandalorian is that the the end credits art, concept art that's shown... Oh, God, I love that. ...is, I think, better than, in some ways, the visuals of the show well, itself. It, again, I, actually, I feel... So I have a theory about that one, mm. which is... They're not. They have a. They have a lower budget. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Right? Yeah, There's exactly. only so Completely much they can do. Understandable. And to Completely. me, that makes it feel very much like old yes. Star Wars. Yes. And the and, and but to your point, this movie, I feel like the concept art and what they put on screen is it's one to one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we when we get and talk about the the art of the Rise of Skywalker coffee table oh book, my God. it's going to be delicious well, the, like yeah. you're just gonna you know spend a week in there every like, frame is like a painting yeah. in, in every in, would, uh, that's a good name for a podcast in 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 each of the two predecessors to this film force awakens and rise and last jedi like i i missed the spectacle you know the return of the jedi spectacle the big space battle the attack of the sorry the revenge of the sith spectacle of the that that cold open in revenge of the sith this is my favorite star wars is space it really battle. i find it so overwhelming i can't stand oh, it. so you loved this one then I did. Okay. I did. I thought the space battles were much better in this one for I, me. I just, I loved seeing a variety of ships. I loved seeing a massive flotilla. Totally. And I loved seeing it executed in a way that didn't look like a CG cartoon and looked like, it looked like it could have been done with just an unbelievable amount of model work. Yeah. Yeah. All um, right. Spoilers. Spoiler well, time. Let's go into spoilers. Spoilers. Okay. Darth Vader is Luke's father. Get <laughs> that motherfucker. Whoa. Wait. Did you know Luke and Leia are brother and sister? It's awkward. Uh, so... Okay, I, th- there's really good characterizations all the way through, and then there's a couple of really massively unearned moments, I thought. Ah, okay. If we, if we want to get into the yeah, the thing. Yeah, yeah, that's where you want to start? What, what was your unearned moments? The Hux, the Hux turn. The Hux turn. We know he's a snivelly weasel the whole time. Right, right. But it's the most obvious setup in the world. You walk, he's in there, he has a gun, there's a couple stormtroopers, they're about to execute, he's like, I want to do this. And then he just guns down the stormtroopers, and he's like... I'm the spy. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, come the f- on. So I was less disappointed about the reveal than the execution of it, which sounds like you're in the that's same a, boat that's there. A, that's the thing, yeah. Like him, his motivations are very clear. He He's, he's right. a he just toxic, wants bitter power. person yeah. who hates Kylo Ren, right? And I, and I have no trouble believing he's that he would- He's the Moff Tarkin yeah. of the- Well, he's like the younger, like the more schemey millennial version, star yep. millennials. Yeah. Uh, but aren't you a millennial? Norm is the same. Yeah, the, it, it, that was a little cheese. Like, like it's 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 the thing. If you think about if you think about like the situations that they got the characters into in Breaking Bad, for example, and the way that 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 team would write them out of those those situations. Peril. Like the we're, the peril that they were in was very well established. It's anxious an easy peril. peril. So and then it's the cheapest way out. Like stuff, and there's not a in ton Breaking of stuff Bad, like though. No, 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 no. Right, right, right. This so movie. that's the that that is that is the the most amazing thing to watch a great screenwriter do is put their character in the corner of a painted room and figure out how they get themselves out. And Breaking Bad every single time does it with cleverness and ingenuity, and you're always surprised by. But it's fair. It is fair. Yeah. So that's a, you know one of the Pixar rules for screenwriting is. Yeah. It's, Ex, yeah. it's it's fine to use a coincidence to get your characters into trouble. It's not okay to use a coincidence to get your characters out mm. of trouble. Um, I I had some trouble with the plot on this one because it felt a little overly. Uh, Overly obvious. Oh, really? 16 hours? 16 hours. That's all we have with all of us. Like all, it, all these big ships now, it turns out with light speed, no one's more than five minutes from any planet. Oh, yeah. the physics of Star Wars have never made J- sense. JJ has, has I'm, really, you just, you just this one, the universe gets that. compressed to a very tiny yeah, degree. Yeah, I mean, you can, you can see Star Killer fire. fire. Yeah. All the worlds of the, of the New Republic and Renew Resistance oh, can see the Star dude. Killer blast. I mean, I'm fine with that. Look, the. the, the uh, let's just be clear. No doubt about it. It's. 
Lando sexual energy that united the galaxy together. Right? <laughs> look, look, <laughs> right? That's hilarious. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> well, Chewie too. I mean, between Chewie and Lando, you got you got both all the all, everything's represented there. Um, you know what? And for this, a big shout out to the actor whose name escapes me right now because I'm a terrible person who's took over the uh, mantle. Yo, uh, Jonas. Eunice, um, I forgot his uh, Jonas is his name. Um, fabulous Jewy performer. It's really, really good. Really, really, really wonderful. Peter Mayhew, uh, an amazing human being, passed away recently and it's very sad. And Chewbacca, I've always said, is my favorite non human character in film. And frankly, I was a little afraid of this because uh, I haven't seen Solo because I was too afraid to watch what they, what, how Chewbacca would work out in that. And in this one, I thought yeah, the characterization was terrific. So I hope that won't bring, let you go back and, and watch Solo, I, appreciating yeah. that performance. I think so. Uh, I and speaking of like, let's performances and to appreciate the puppetry, the puppet work. Oh my God. was so good in this film. Oh, the little guy. Yes. Yeah. 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 So you think it's the same team that made Baby Yoda, the Baby Yoda puppet? No, I don't, I don't think it's the same hey, team. Hey, if but... you work on the team that made Baby Yoda, can you bring Baby Yoda to the cave so we could shoot a video about it? <laughs> I want to come to see Baby Yoda. We really, really, really would like to find out about his use of the force. We're going to build an egg pod. You know we're going to take care of all this. Please, if you worked on the Baby Yoda team. Reach out. Reach out. You, you know someone who knows how to get a hold of us. Uh, so, so. Um, I was going to say the, the chewy moments were the ones that got me for the, the had real, I was profoundly upset for when, when you feel like Chewie's dies, mm -hmm. you know, in that, in that little red herring, that sleight of yeah. another kind of cheap sleight of hand. Um, that, that felt, that, that felt a little, uh, yeah, uh, easy. Yeah. Oh, oh, there must've been a second ship. Oh, 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 okay. That makes sense. Well, they never really went into like the, the, uh, they never, they never felt the death in a way that I, I thought it was going to be a lasting death. I I felt like it was a lasting. It was I, a lasting knew death. That I knew I yeah, knew beyond exactly. a shadow of a doubt exactly. that he was not dead. So I assumed I assumed coming into this that everybody everyone was on the table. I did. Funnily enough, I did not, and and they weren't. Almost nobody <laughs> died. I, 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 to be honest, that they <laughs> might have had more power had they decided to right. really kill someone much more central. Exactly. And well, I mean, I mean yeah, why and not? They, it's supposed they, to be the end of the story here. They resurrected C3. They killed C3PO and then resurrected C3PO. Now, I actually liked him more as the new C3PO. Also, everybody they missed does. a chance sucks. for a joke. They missed a chance for a joke. If R2's storage is famously unreliable and he mm. zaps uh, C3PO's consciousness back into him, <clears throat> they should have done a joke where his consciousness is there, but clearly one thing is wrong or like, like he, he picks he up only the accent speaks of the French yeah the accent of the first person he talks to or something right? <laughs> that was a really funny smash cut though it was like oh you're not gonna do that to me and then immediately he's, oh yeah he's plugged in plugged and, and yeah the 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 I mean the big look if we want to get to the thing that is the unearned thing that made me like I was with the movie right up until about the last 10 minutes and then we got to the bit where the you know Ray does the business with the force and the lightsabers and I'm like fuck yeah kill the emperor with his own mm. bad force juice <laughs> and then, then she dies and, and Kylo Ren comes up and it's like, oh yeah, she's, he's going to give his life back to bring her back to life. This is going to be amazing. Oh, and, and I'm uh, like, I'm with it. I'm, I'm, I'm good to go. And then she comes back to life and she's like, Adam driver, you're so dreamy. Mwah. And I'm like, well, the kiss, you can <laughs> deal with the kiss. I can deal with kiss. the kiss. The kiss sucks. Uh, honestly, the Scully Mulder kiss was way better. Oh. The oh God, the Scully Mulder kiss was this in 1998. It's the same thing. It's, yeah, it's, it's just like these characters don't need to have a relationship you, at all. If you remember in the Scully Mulder kiss, it was New Year's Eve. They were in a hospital. They saw the countdown on a television and they were like, oh, it's, it's midnight. And they just looked at each other and kissed. And when they separated, she said, oh. I don't know what all the fuss was about. And then they never <laughs> talked about it again in the whole series. Genius way to deal yeah. with that kiss. Good job, Chris <sighs> Carter. God. But yeah, I agree. Completely unnecessary. They could have had a friendship or a bond or whatever that was that, you know, in, in Ben, like what she saw in Ben, mm -hmm. the, the, her whole thing with like, I want to take his hand. Uh, didn't, didn't really feel it there. Uh, I will say the emperor was scary. Yeah, mm -hmm. I really like the way they filmed the emperor, the lighting, how mm -hmm. it could mm -hmm. lit different. It's like they took the classic Halloween trick of underlighting below your yeah, face yeah. and just like mash that up with strobe lights. To be honest, though, my favorite emperor is still the one from Empire. 
the one that's the hologram. The, yeah, with it, and it was they cast a female actress. They had mm. big eye prosthetics, and they projected like cow's eyes onto the prosthetics. Like mm. there was this whole weird thing they did that made it super creepy. Like I'm still creeped out by the Empire Emperor. The Empire Emperor projection. I I liked I liked the Emperor hanging with all the tubes and stuff keeping that him alive. That was awesome. Like, and, I, and you know, very Tetsuo, very uh, oh yeah, yeah, very the, body horror from Akira kind of thing. And the thing that I loved, the thing that I did love about this, that is actually good, is he solved the problem from Return of the Jedi, which is how can Luke defeat evil without becoming evil himself? And you know, by forcing by by returning his own using his own power yeah, against yeah, him, yada yeah. yada. You know, spider that's, tingle. That's great. That's yeah, the Peter tingle. It's also interesting Peter that tingle. That's, that's what yeah, it that's is. Really yeah. Uh, they, you know how people were up in arms after the Last Jedi because of the the newfound Force powers. Right? Like, how can Luke Force project himself across the galaxy on another planet? Like, it's fiction. It's fantasy, right? folks. It's a, it yeah. felt like what Disney did, you- did this thing where they introduced, and we're gonna have minor, minor Mandalorian spoilers here in the penultimate episode of the season of Mandalorian episode uh, the seven, the most recent yeah. one where baby Yoda gives life force uh-huh. to uh, revive uh, Carl Weathers, uh, Carl Weathers yeah. character. And that was a way to ease new viewers into like, I was what? totally ready force? for that. I was for- like, Oh, this oh, is a new thing. From the uh, force. Yes, <laughs> exactly. And they, they did this little bit of kind of uh, this world building synergy without mm-hmm. having like exact, which I thought was really neat. And yeah. that, that was cool. Yeah. I got no beef with that. I yeah. got no beef with using the force to make people come back to life. It's the force. <laughs> as long as you don't quantify how much force one person has, I'm totally okay with it. <laughs> with some type of count. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Um, the the moment and the sound design for the moment where she feels all the Jedi that have lived in the past mm-hmm. within her. Mm-hmm. That yep. was lovely. Yeah, that was, all the that was like the people. port. Yeah, mm-hmm. all the voices. And I wish they could have made that like lingered on that a little more. So this, you have actually alighted on the one problem I had with the film overall is that um, I wanted more spaces of quiet and lingering and character building. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that's almost often missing and often a thing the studio fights against tooth and nail in any big studio picture. Remember famously Joss Whedon, spent all production trying to keep the Hawkeye farmhouse scene in the Avengers. Mm -hmm. And the studio was against him on that. And we all agreed after seeing that. I still, I watched that movie recently. That's like the most important part of that movie. You need that for that character building and to have that space to recover. They're human. It makes them human. Yeah. And I I wanted some of that because this movie uh, felt like a pod race in its, in the just, Unending stream of relentless barrels uh, along. Did, yeah, did, you know, Martin Scorsese criticized <laughs> Marvel films and called them a not cinema, and then said, "Oh, what he meant was that there are theme park rides, and this leans into it being a theme park ride." Yeah, you know, it's funny that he says that. I I had a real problem with his letter and his explanation of 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 that whole thing because I still feel like there are ways in which he's talking to 1980s Steven Spielberg. He's talking about the second Raiders film with like that, that, that literally first had sequence a roller coaster you knew sequence. was going to be a theme park ride yeah, on the yeah, tracks of, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. of the mining. And, you know, the Marvel films, to be honest, for me, they tend to lack those really obvious action sequences that someone was hoping some Imagineers could turn or, into a gazillion dollar Or that they would turn enterprise. into a video game. Right. Right. Like, like if you look at the, the prequels where you had the sequence, the platforming sequence where R2-D2 flies through the droid factory and has to rescue. Yep. Like, yep. That, yeah. They made a whole game about the pod racing. <laughs> right. Yeah, it, exactly. Yeah. So I, I tend to find that much more with the uh, Star Wars universe films than with the Marvel universe films. So, uh, uh, one thing I absolutely love. Which are now all the same universe. Right? Is the variety of aliens. We saw Dude, so many good aliens. So many like, much better. This was a- yeah. Some J.J. Abrams asked J.J. Abrams alien business, and it was almost all awesome. Super. Like the super snake. Great. The snake was a great monster that turned out to be yeah, not a monster. Pretty yep, cool. Yep. Yep. Like it was, I, it was I really loved good. all the ancillary characters. Um the big worm guy. I wanted to see some blurgs. Yeah. What are blurgs? Blurgs from the Mandalorian. Are, uh, the quills the... animals from the Mandalorian. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, the the quill or Quinn? Uh Quill. 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 Oh. Oh, oh, wait, Nick Nolte. wait, wait, is he the, is he He's the Nick Wills? Nolte. Is he the things that the microscopic universe that was going to be the original no, third trilogy? No, no, stop it. No, sorry, stop no, it. No, sorry, I will, sorry. I will, I will make this no thing do-backs, work no, and I will no, pierce you. No, <laughs> do, um, do, um, do, it's Wills. Wills. Oh, oh, okay. Not Quills. 
<laughs> um, so, yeah, it was fine. <laughs> Look, I mean, again, I'm just going to go back to saying this. You're just going to end up with something this big. My favorite thing about it is there's nothing about it that was stupid or dumb, which is frankly something that happens to a lot of big capper movies. Like there ends up being so much Deus Ex Machina. It was safe. Part of, yeah, it was safe. And I felt like it needed to be that. Like I understand why they did that. Did the new robot do anything? The new Dio? little robot? Yeah. Except be cute and sell merch. Uh, yeah, he he's he gonna had, sell a lot of toys. He he somehow knew who no, thank Ray's you, no, parents thank you. were. No, thank you. No, thank you. I thought that was hilarious. Did he? Yeah, he knew who Ray's parents were. He was like on a ship and yeah. saw Ray's parents oh, being transported. Well, he, he was on Ray's parents' ship. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so Amazingly he was Ray's they... robot from her youth. No, 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 no. It was no. He, he was the robot that was on the Jedi Hunter ship that took Ray's oh. parents and killed them with the dagger oh. as they were trying to protect Ray. So Jakku. not really then. He could have just been the dagger probably. Yeah. Okay. I liked him. I thought he was, was a, very cute. a delightful bot. And, yeah. and Matt Dunton, you know, uh, front of Tested, who's guest in the pod, you know, helped work on all those droids. Oh, Did he really? Awesome. Yeah. That's, oh, that's cool. yeah, awesome. The puppeteering team. Yeah. Um, what is the name of the new droid? Dio. Dio. Like D0. D0. Oh, Dio. Dio. Like Dio. Ronnie James oh. Dio. Yeah. So it's like, it's super metal. It's heavy metal. <laughs> that, that droid is the most <laughs> metalist of droids. Uh, there's also Zori, um, who is uh, Carrie Russell's you know, uh, character. I, yeah. Now, I really love her helmet. Yeah. I love helmet's a, amazing. That, the, Wait, that was Carrie Russell? Yeah. Yes. They paid a lot for her eyes, oh her smoky God. eyes. Um, and her voice, of course. I thought her, the, the She has the best voice. The cat suit was a little bit unnecessary on that freezing planet. They could have given her a, <laughs> a, a cloak or a scarf. I liked C3PO in the cloak. I thought that was a really good bit. <laughs> yep, that was fun. C3PO wearing clothes is very funny to me, and I'm not sure why. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it planet to planet to planet. I mean, there literally was a sequence in this movie where they hyperspace quickly from planet to planet to planet, and it's a dangerous thing to do. And this, you know, this movie you felt were like, like speed that. skipping. Speed, yep. How, how, who was the, um, do you know who the actress was who was the other stormtrooper? The one that they found on, on Endor? I don't know her oh, name. Finn's new friend. Yeah. She was terrific. Yeah, she yeah. was good. Like, all, like, I thought there wasn't very much Rose. We didn't see much Rose. So, at I, all. and I felt like that storyline. Still underdeveloped, came at the cost of the the Rose storyline, which again, yeah, uh, yep. this is a consequence of different writers, different yeah. team coming in and inheriting a story. But I really like the idea that Finn Finn found his people, and in people in that there were ex troopers, oh, troopers. Yes. and he wasn't alone, and they gave some kind of like uniting reason why they all see, push back. See, I felt like there wasn't the thing that bummed me out is that I felt like. Um, uh, Ray definitely got a, her conclusion, right? Yeah. Um, Poe got his conclusion. He's mm -hmm. the he's the leader that the the re the rebellion needs now. I felt like Finn kind of didn't get get didn't. Oh, yeah. Get the, Poe the, Poe got his. Poe yeah, po got yeah, his. Right. I agree. Yeah, I, I agree. felt Finn got Finn didn't kind quite of get his full. I mean, Chewbacca even got his medal of Yavin. Finally, that, and I cried at that. I had legit tears when Chewbacca got the medal. I was like, this is the shittiest fan servicey thing ever, and I'm like, <laughs> yes, he got the medal. Wedge Wedge Tilly's. Popped in at the Where end. Where was he? I didn't see him. Oh, he's a little older now. Oh. But he was there when when the uh, flotilla comes in. When the armada comes in, but, but, he's one of the, you know... He's one of the other he's guys? He's one of the pilots. Also, was Anthony Daniels in the turret of, yeah, I think he uh, was. of the Millennium Falcon? I think that was, he was great. I love I that. I think he was. Um, also, Greg well. Grunberg, oh, friend of Tested Greg mm. Grunberg, is in like... Half of the shots of this movie, he gets yeah. a ton of coverage. That yeah. was awesome. I thought it was see. great that he got to fly the A-wing. I love that. I know. Yeah, <laughs> he had a good run. Um, Lin Manuel was uh, cameoed at the end. Oh, was yeah, he? The celebration. Uh, he did some work apparently on the song, one of the songs in the film, ah. the Alien songs. He I, also did it on Force Awakens too. I was um, bummed there was no Yub Nub. I'm not. You know, they unretconned a lot of the other things, but they didn't unretcon Yub Nub. Yeah, Warwick Davis was yeah, in the, there. The, the, the Ewoks. Oh, the Ewoks. Song. I can't hey, stand the Ewoks. Hey, Ewoks were in this film too. I, yeah. You I, know, I was terrified they were going to speak I, their terrible life. I, I hate Ewoks. Wow. I never thought you'd be Ewokus, Adam. I'm really disappointed. <laughs> I, I hate like kind of going back to Endgame, but Endgame yeah. really is another great point of reference in terms of wrapping up a big story. Mm -hmm. But Endgame ended amazingly and then had its extended epilogue that lay the seeds mm -hmm. for all this interesting stuff. Thor, Guardians of the Galaxy, mm -hmm. new Captain America, old Captain America, yep, yep, yep. Right? all these like things. And, it, and I felt like 
we know Star Wars isn't going to end. Like the Star Wars yeah, yeah. saga, I'm okay with Rey Skywalker going off into the world and doing her own thing. I don't need to revisit these characters, but like lay some seeds in the universe, right? What does yeah. it mean now that the Emperor and the, the Final Order are gone, right? It was 10,000 years place. of peace. They're cool. Everything's it, good. It, it could have been a good place to, to lay some cool seeds in. I think that's being done on the set of The Mandalorian. And mm. I I am super ecstatic about that. I, I, I hear what you're saying. Yeah. I think it's reasonable to take a period of a, some br a break. Yeah. I, I'm not the one making these decisions. So who knows what they're actually going to do. Let Ryan Johnson make his trilogy. I totally agree with that. And I, I, I think the excitement that. that I'm so glad Knives Out came out last month. God, it's so good. Because it's universal acclaim. It deserves it. He We're deserves gonna... all the praise for that. And I hope that Disney and Lucasfilm take a look at his work, take a step back after, of course, all this, uh, yeah. the, this Rise of Skywalker stuff and say, I think people are going to get really excited about Ryan Johnson taking something and doing something different and the expectations not being it being a Star Wars episode X yeah, yeah. movie. Well, well, I mean, it, it, it's, I mean, look, movie executives should pay less attention to YouTube and more, the, more to the work, right? Like, look at, look at the work. I am, um, look at the work and look at specifically the prop that I wanted to make from this movie, <laughs> the Sith Wayfinder. Yeah, that cute, that oh, nice yeah. that pyramid yeah. thing nice. was really They're good. They, cool they only prop. made two of them, Adam. <laughs> I can make another. I, there is another. I, I mean, I think of the things you've made recently, yeah. there are techno technological elements that could work well. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, some, some of the light yeah, control. Yes, and, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. And the flickering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, uh, we can print clear now. We can 3D print and clear resins now. It's very exciting. Yeah. Did you see the naked figures? No, I'll go look in a little bit. Oh, there. yeah. We got some to show you. <laughs> um, uh, um, I did like, you know, their Cap Mjolnir moment was the moment when Ray passed the lightsaber to Kylo when I he dug fought, that. and I dug that too. I thought the idea, so <laughs> his shrug, when he when he pulls it back from behind his head, and it's like, oh, yeah, okay, I got this. That was so good. Amazing. Adam, just, just Adam, Adam Driver, Driver <laughs> like the kiss aside, Adam Driver and Daisy Ridley, both their, their, their performances yep. against each other in this film are exceptional. I totally agree. Sweatshirt Ben, that's what yeah. they're calling him on. Like I, Sweatshirt look, Ben. <laughs> the perf even if you really dislike this movie, and a lot of people are going to be unhappy and a lot of people are going to be left disappointed. The fact is, it's beautiful. The performances are stellar. Uh, pretty across much the board. across yeah. the board. Yeah. Uh, and I love... Daisy Ridley's voice. And it was great to hear Carrie Russell because they're both female actresses with this really resonant low lower end register, part yeah. of their voice that it's just, it's never not great to hear them talk. Yeah. Um, Still digesting. Yeah, no, I, I think we all have to tomorrow. see it again. We'll I got to see it, it again. After, after uh, the there's, there's a lot of work to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, you got to see Knives Out. I'm dying to know, so I'm going to buy tranches of tickets because we have like nine family members coming to the house oh to gosh. stay over the next few That's days. That's a great one to watch. Yeah, yeah so I figure we'll just buy like tranches of eight or nine tickets buy, at Alamo, yeah. which is around the corner, and just send people there as we... Yeah, buy, buy out the theater, <laughs> exactly. bring them all in. It's, it, it is more... I'm, I'm going to go see it again because Gina hasn't seen it yet either, and it's... I'm, it's stupendous. I'm really curious from people out there, you know, uh, yes, what one you think, what you think about it, but also what the theater experience has been like. I think, right. like, you know, wh what were the moments that people gasped or, and what was, it, did it feel like yeah. at the end? Like at the end of Last Jedi, when we saw it, people cheered. People, when, when Ray lifts up the rocks and, and they're rescued and they're flying away, they, people cheered in my theaters. Yeah. And, yeah. and then, like that they were somber, happen, yeah. but, but, but when you realize that the entirety of the rebellion is in the Millennium Falcon at the end of that movie, people were somber. It was a quiet yeah. walkout. Yeah. People were really thoughtful, and it was intense. So didn't true. get that today. No cheering today. No. Interesting. Yeah. No. A lot yeah. of laughs. Is this uh, our last podcast might, of the I was year? Just to say, I think this is our final one of the year. I don't think we're going to we'll be able New to Year's reconvene. We'll we will take New Year's Eve off. Uh, maybe I'll throw a, a episode from An the archive, archive. Yeah. for people Best to, of. to. Yeah, exactly. But, but that then, Last Jedi one up there, people will love that. Ah, <laughs> that's not a bad idea. Uh, so have a wonderful Christmas. Have a happy New Year. We're going to be back with a lot of cool stuff. Oh my God, twenty twenty is shaping up to be. You know, it, it's funny. People always say things like this. Oh, the next year's shaping up to be great. But guess what? We filmed so much of it for January. It's already all done. We we can tell you it's good. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. It's very exciting. Tested 2020 is going to be an awesome year.
Um, thank okay. you, yeah, guys. Thanks, my friends. Yeah, thank you. So delightful doing this every week yeah, with you. It's a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the things I am most thankful for. <laughs> Me too. Um, and, and thank you all there for listening. Yeah. yeah thanks. thanks, guys. We wouldn't do it if you guys have didn't listen. an excellent holiday season, and we'll see you in January. See you then. Bye, everybody. Bye.